Item number SCP-097 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-097 is contained within the limits of the property where it was initially discovered. Zone SCP-097 The property is surrounded by an 8-meter-tall concrete block fence, fitted with barbed wire and security camera systems. Satellite images of Zone SCP-097 are to be doctored, removing all traces of the area. Any and all new plant growth outside the containment area suspected to originate from within the SCP is to be sterilized through application of boiling salt water and or incinerated. Absolutely all abnormal behavior is to be reported to Dr. Bridge within ten minutes of occurrence. If any personnel or their families experience hallucinations or thematically related dreams outside of containment, they are to contact Dr. Bridge to schedule treatment. Locality surrounding SCP-097, specifically are to be monitored from the 1st of April until the 1st of November every year for affected civilians. Medical establishments dealing with sleep abnormalities are to be monitored for signs of SCP-097's influence. Civilians below the age of 16 encountered alone within one square kilometer of Zone SCP-097 are to be taken into Foundation custody and are to be treated with a Class B amnestic and returned home, or the nearest police station. Personnel tasked with the return of civilians are to avoid public exposure. Each agent is to be assigned a cover story to follow if they do encounter civilians en route to their destinations. See Level 3 staff for details. The morning after the first frost of the year, a team of 25 agents armed with agricultural tools are to enter SCP-097 and clear away the outer plant matter. This process is not to continue past dusk. Description: SCP-097 is a 10-acre area of land in the state of in the Midwestern United States. It is the abandoned remains of the County Fair 1969, an area of approximately 2.3 km squared, approximately 5.4 square miles. Structures within the SCP area exist in a state of moderate disrepair, consistent with the expected age and environment. At the center of SCP-097 lie the remains of a 1956 Buick pickup truck, majority of which is crushed beneath a colossal pumpkin of unknown subtype, henceforth SCP-097-01. SCP-097-01 stands approximately 7.4 meters feet tall and 8.1 meters feet in diameter at its widest. Current estimates put SCP-097-01 at approximately 15,000 kg, approximately 33,070 pounds. This pumpkin remains roughly spherical in shape, instead of spreading out under its own weight as would be expected of a plant of its size. The remaining portion of SCP-097, approximately 2 km squared, is overgrown with several dozen varieties of pumpkins, with over 70 subspecies yet identified, and many previously unknown to agriculture. Many of these pumpkins have been shown capable of growing to enormous sizes, the average estimated weight being around 250 kg, average 550 pounds. These pumpkins, along with the assorted other crops, grow with, on, or around the remains of the 1969 fairgrounds, creating a maze-like arrangement of plant life. The average height of the walls within SCP-097 is 1.6 meters, though this may vary from year to year. Between April and November each year, the area within SCP-097 has produced a number of anomalous phenomena, ranging from benign to implicitly aggressive. To date, seventeen agents have been severely maimed within SCP-097, eight having died. See Event Log SCP-097 for a brief listing of recorded phenomena. Addendum Historical Note Prior to the construction of SCP-097's containment wall, Instances of what are now known as SCP-2171-1 were occasionally observed to form fragmented walls, and at one point a near-complete ring of 2171 around SCP-097's area of effect. This behavior ceased following the containment wall's completion. The purpose and implications behind this interaction are as of yet unknown. Effects of SCP-097 on Children in addition to its immediate effects outlined in Event Log SCP-097, SCP-097-01 appears to produce an undetectable signal towards children in an indetermined range. For clarity, children will refer to individuals up to the age of 10. Beginning in early April, civilian children within SCP-097's undefined range may be overcome with somnambulism on clear nights. Affected children will move around their homes, stop in the face closed doorways for several seconds before moving on to the next nearest doorway, eventually returning to bed. 
At first, this behavior will occur only once a week, beginning with only the doors on a single floor. This sleepwalking will become more frequent, by mid-August happening every night. If forcibly awoken at any time during these episodes, they will scream for several seconds before succumbing to a degree of confusion. After an affected child is awoken in this manner, the effect will cease, and the child will never show any further signs of SCP-097's influence. Over the course of two to three months, these episodes will become more thorough. Affected individuals seeking out each doorway inside their home, as well as those on their household's property, such as garages, car doors, and fence gates. Eventually, they will begin visiting the front doors of neighbors. Beginning in September, affected children who have remained undisturbed during these episodes will begin to remain outside at sunrise, laying on grass near their homestead, and returning to full REM sleep. Affected children may recall dreams centering around autumn activities. Between September 1st and November 1st, if the affected children have not been awoken during the preceding sleepwalking episodes, they will cease the previously established activity during the sleepwalk, and instead begin to walk directly towards SCP-097's location. They will travel over fields and down secondary roads, steadily moving towards SCP-097. Local geography consists mostly of undeveloped Foundation-owned property, facilitating uninterrupted travel. Upon arrival at SCP-097, an affected child will sit down before SCP-097-01 and begin singing unidentifiable gibberish as music begins to play. While a number of instruments have been recorded, simple drums and pipes are the most consistently encountered. After several minutes, childlike entities will crawl out from tangled flora or break out of larger pumpkins within SCP-097. The children will be wearing whatever they were last seen with, most often pajamas or similar clothing. Many of these entities match those children known to be lost to SCP-097-01. The entities will surround the affected civilian child, dancing and singing in a circle as SCP-097-01 begin to emit dim light. The affected child will awaken, normally expressing a great deal of terror. The instant any vocalization is produced, the entities will swarm and kill the child. Methods used are different in each instance, but usually involve dismemberment or strangulation. At this point, any and all efforts to interrupt the entities will fail, whether through breakdown of equipment, sudden intangibility of the subjects, or express violence on the part of SCP-097. After the death of the affected child, SCP-097-01 will split open and the entities will hurl the remains into it, before climbing in themselves. SCP-097-01 will then close, and the music will stop. Before the containment wall was erected, at least children between the ages of 3 and 10 are known to have been lost to SCP-097. See Event Log SCP-097 for current examples of SCP-097's behavior. Event Log SCP-097 This is a general incident log for SCP-097 for the cycle between September 1st and November 1st. This is an abridged version. Please requisition full individual reports from Dr. Bridge. During this time, four civilian children were captured and returned to their families. Month, Day, Year, Time, Event, Notes September 3rd Time, 9.39 Cameras 3B, 4A, 4C, 5B view child, approximately 4 years of age, walk between tangles of plant matter towards SCP-097-1 over an 8 minute period. Child appeared to be dragging a stuffed animal. Child appeared on footage during review period. No figure was viewed at the time of recording. September 5th, 1733. Human scream heard from within SCP-097, heard throughout the site. On-site personnel described it as possessing a small child's voice, sustained for approximately three minutes before stopping abruptly. Staff reported feeling as if they were being watched during the event. September 8th. Several bedsheet ghosts are seen through various security feeds throughout the day, would only appear for approximately one to three seconds before vanishing again. Staff did not report seeing any anomalous entities firsthand. Patrols doubled for the remaining time in the SCP cycle. September 13, 2219. Unidentifiable singing is heard throughout the site, persisting for three hours before becoming silent. Recordings reveal song like gibberish, with up to 30 individual children's voices singing at any time. Recordings archived for future study. September 19, 1427. Agent McRoy cuts a pumpkin's vine with machete. 
Severed vine proceeded to bleed approximately 50 liters of human blood before shriveling. Blood type AB negative. No DNA match. September 24th. Overnight, two separate pumpkin patches grew into the rough approximation of humanoid figures lying on the ground. Destroyed without incident. September 25th. 517. Agent Long found decapitated, neck against a pumpkin. Disappeared en route to a restroom break. September 27th. 250. All light bulbs on site burn out within a two minute period. Critical areas repaired before nightfall. September 30th. 1216. Sudden shift noted in the location of several dozen gourd plants. Time and nature of actual event unknown. October 1st. 1429. Agent Cole accidentally damages and breaks pumpkin during weekly examination of SCP-097. Pumpkin splits open, revealing a complete human child skeleton in the fetal position within. Female, approximately five years old, no DNA match. October 2nd, 29 freshly decapitated crows found outside SCP-097's containment wall. None. October 6th, 637. Matured pumpkin plant found to have replaced a potted plant growing inside Dr. Bridges' office. Indoor plants banned from the site. Pumpkin incinerated immediately. October 7, 1650. Agent Matthews falls unconscious during patrol and cannot be awoken until removed from property. Agent reported dreaming of autumn colors and the smell of leaves. Full recovery. Reassigned the desk work pending examination. October 11, 738. Research assistant Sturm reports overwhelming taste and scent of pumpkin permeating her senses. No other personnel report anomaly. Transferred off-site. Examination pending. October 13. Sounds of steady drums playing throughout the day, from 0 hundred hours to 2359 hours. Source of sound unknown. Recordings archived for future study. October 17. 319. Male child approximately six years of age and clad in pajamas, seen climbing through corn stalks on the eastern end of SCP-097, moving towards SCP-097-01. Lost to SCP-097-01, how the child was able to escape notice by personnel until after he was lost to the SCP is unknown. October 20th, 1307. All personnel within 3.6 km of SCP-097-01 report hallucinations of orange haze and children's laughter. Personnel evacuated to a distance outside the area of effect. Personnel screened for mental interference. October 23, 0001. All power and backup power to the area failed. Upon recovery, pumpkins within SCP-097 were found to have changed into carved lanterns. It is unknown how SCP-097 generated and lit candles. Team 097 Alpha and Beta tasked to destroy lanterns after sunrise. October 23, 813. Team 097 Alpha reports seeing and hearing children playing among the flora within SCP-097. Recordings lack the entities expected from the reports. Children noted to be clad in pajamas. Team pulled from SCP. Screened for mental interference. October 25, 1149. Z-Maze Indorata kernels fall from the sky around SCP-097. Does not fall within containment walls. Area cleansed with flame units and replanted with non-native grasses. Pavement of outside area pending. October 26, 2113. Research assistant O'Toole overcome with nausea and vomits pumpkin seeds. O'Toole did not eat pumpkin seeds previous to vomiting. Research assistant O'Toole transferred to site for examination. Seeds incinerated with prejudice. October 27, 1003. Research Assistant O'Toole reported to have died overnight. Autopsy reveals thoracic cavity was filled with pumpkin seeds. Body incinerated at site. All personnel scheduled for full physical examination. October 28th. Unintelligible whispering gibberish heard by fertile female personnel throughout the area when in view of SCP-097. Phenomenon continues throughout the day, continuing for the duration of SCP-097's cycle. Example, until November 1st. Associated personnel removed from duty and scheduled for examination. October 28, 
1745. Headlights of vehicle underneath SCP-097-01 light and stay lit until daybreak. None. October 29th. Fruit trees within SCP-097 blossom over the course of five hours, beginning at roughly 0700. Flowers wither and fall soon after. None. October 29th. 807. Pumpkins near south entrance to SCP-097 begin spontaneously bleeding from the stem. Each continued bleeding for three hours. Blood type AB negative. No DNA match. October 31st. 310. Several dozen unidentified spheres of red light viewed drifting above SCP-097 and surrounding area. When light was shown directly on the spheres, a piercing shriek was heard. Personnel called into the main building as the spheres dissipated at dawn. October 31st Noon Sounds of steady drones are recorded from within SCP-097. Drones persist for the following 12 hours. No source identified. Recordings archived for future study. October 31st 1419 All strawberry plants within SCP-097 wither in unison. None. October 31st 1743 between 25 and 30 animate human skeletons of varying size are recorded breaking out of larger pumpkins within SCP-097. Skeletons traverse through SCP-097 flora to the northeast peach tree and hang themselves from its branches using lengths of grapevine, electrical cable, and decaying rope. Skeletons cease anomalous behavior after pantomiming death by hanging. Death throes continue for approximately 23 minutes. Skeletons recovered after first frost. All appeared under 12 years of age. No DNA matches. Skeletons incinerated after examination.